this meeting to order. Uh, going over the agenda, I see that we have no delegation scheduled today, which means we'll just jump right into our reports. Uh, first up, uh, we got Mr. Monty Hoyen uh, with the Downtown Rehabilitation Phase 4 update. Uh, I'll ask Monty to turn on the screen and uh, welcome, my friend. Uh, good morning, Chair Chris. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. I'll update on uh, what's been happening downtown. So, good day, Chairman, Mayor, Councillors, and Members. So, the start of construction began on Monday, May 3, three weeks earlier than the previous three phases. Um, hopefully, this will translate into three weeks earlier in, in the year, at the end of the year. At that time, the intersection of 100th Street and 100th Avenue was closed to vehicular traffic. So removal of the existing sidewalk structure was started on May 3 also. The initial plans to use wooden sidewalk structures was attempted but immediately determined to be inadequate for the purposes. Nelson Sand and Gravel then decided to place a four foot wide asphalt surface that will maintain front access to the businesses between 100th Street and 99th Street. The work within the intersection of 100th Street and 100th Avenue was completed on Saturday, May 8th, with the opening of the intersection to vehicular traffic on May 9th. The intersection was closed for six days. Temporary water installation has passed the stringent water test, so installations of the deep infrastructure may now proceed further east from 100th Street. Um, 99th Street, north-south, will close to vehicular traffic on Wednesday, May 12th, tomorrow. The access to the lanes to the north and south of 100th Avenue will remain open to vehicular traffic. On that point, I would like to thank Robert Carroll's Parks and Transportation crews that cleaned the back lanes within the downtown rehabilitation zone. I've heard very nice comments about this cleanup. Uh, the City Transportation Department will be installing temporary angle parking on 99th Street between New Horizon Co-op and Soul Addiction uh, to add valuable public parking spaces to the downtown core. And that's basically my update for today. Available for questions? All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Hoy. And I'll just uh, look. I see I have Mayor Clayton in the queue. Um, and I'm working off my cell phone. Sorry, everyone. Uh, so if I miss somebody, uh, don't be afraid to say, hey, go ahead, Mayor Clayton. No, no problem, uh, Councillor Houston. I just wanted to say a couple things. Uh, Monty, um, you're bang on the comments you heard in regards to the cleanup crew downtown in the back alleys. Um, I can tell you um, as a small business owner downtown that the cleanup crews were exceptional. The amount of dust and dirt and debris that they pulled from behind the buildings. And then I saw it piled up down the back alley and literally I was uh, in the area an hour later and it was all gone. So they did an exceptional job. So a uh, big shout out to them. And then also I just wanted to say shout out to uh, Wendy and the Downtown Association. Their marketing initiatives that I've seen so far have been exceptional. Um, you know, I see them walking around, talking to businesses, working uh, through the social media channels, and the, the uptake I'm seeing online through social media um, has been great. And, and loving the approach and uh, the tongue-in-cheek humor is great. So congratulations to Wendy and her crew for a good marketing campaign from what I've seen so far. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I'll uh, just look to see if there's any other questions or comments from my council colleagues. Um, Kevin O'Toole. Oh, there you go, Kevin, Kevin O'Toole, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanna comment on the sandwich, sandwich boards. Uh, really good uh, use of those. I uh, was downtown shopping for Mother's Day and uh, it was nice to see the nice clean signs posted throughout uh, the downtown. So uh, whoever's uh, idea that was, excellent. Thank you. On, on that point through the chair, um, I forgot to mention that we have reopened the applications uh, for businesses that happened to miss the, the application the first time. So we're going to be doing a second round of the A boards. They, they stand out and it's really helpful for the businesses for sure. Awesome. Thanks for that, Monty. Uh, still looking, scrolling through, uh, seeing no other yeah. comments. Oh, Sorry, is that Council you, Dylan? Yeah, thanks, Council Teacher. I can take over the chair. Thanks for getting started for me. Yeah, I really appreciate it. 
And I actually do have a question for Monty. Oh, I actually just coming from Monty. I just wanted to say thank you to to yourself and the contractor for those asphalt sidewalks and quickly adapting there. For I know for uh, for council, it's important that people of all abilities can get around downtown, and I think that's really important. That we last time we've had segments of our population could access downtown for much of the construction and. I see that it's a priority to make sure that's not happening this time and really appreciate going above and beyond for that. Yes, I, I'm just curious. I really believe that uh, the, the asphalt sidewalk, sidewalks and the ability for uh, any patrons to access the front access is tantamount to <laughs> even my my job because I have a lot less complaints when, when they're able to get to the front doors. So. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Great, well, thank you, Monty, and thanks again, Council Chief, for getting started for me. Um, I, with that, I'll move on to item 3.2, which is Director Service Area Update with Director Glavin. Thank you, Chair Bressy. Uh, we definitely have a, a lot going on right now, so a slightly longer update than usual. But in uh, economic development, uh, we have our Serving Up Knowledge Series continuing. Uh, Thursday at 10 a.m., there's another session of leveraging your Instagram for business with 910. And next Thursday, May 20th, is Step Into Mobile Marketing with Get In The Loop. Uh, we'll also be announcing some additional events for some of the industries that have been targeted in the most recent lockdowns uh, as well. Uh, we're continuing to see lots of inquiries and applications for the uh, beautification and patio grants as restaurants prepare for when they're able to reopen again for patio season. Uh, prior to the most recent round of shutdowns, we had approved 14 uh, patios um, on a temporary basis and permanent basis. Some of them are looking to have more permanent structures uh, and are using this as an opportunity to do that. In energy and environment, uh, we hosted a bioengineering session in O'Brien Lake uh, last week to um, basically utilize vegetation to stabilize uh, a couple unstable banks uh, at an outfall. Uh, in this case, we used willow trees or uh, shoots in order to put them into the ground that will eventually start growing and uh, assist with erosion and stabilization of those banks in that area. It's also something that we've done along the Bear Creek and we plan to do uh, on a regular basis uh, uh, going forward as it's a relatively cheap and efficient way of using uh, vegetation to do what otherwise could cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in some cases. Uh, if we have to, an engineered solution. Uh, for GP Grows, uh, we had 1,200 people pick up their kits. Uh, we did have some remaining that we distributed to the library, and uh, they were going to distribute them on our behalf uh, subsequent to that. Uh, as well at East Link Center, we've retained an acou acoustical consultant to do a sound study for the CHP units. Uh, it takes about three weeks for them to gather enough data to give us any recommendations. Uh, and we expect to have recommendations mid-June uh, after they collect the data and prepare that report. Uh, and then we'll be able to bring forward our actions after that. In engineering services, we posted the traffic signal work uh, tender for 2021. Uh, as well, we've recently closed uh, bridge repairs uh, tender, our local road rehab phase three tender for portions of Mission Heights and Richmond Industrial Park our Rehabilitation and Overlay Program Phase 4 for Lakeland Drive in Lakeland and Crystal Lake States, and as well as a portion of Crystal Heights. Uh, we've also recently closed the Bear Creek Outfall Repair Tender, uh, which has uh, four locations along Bear Creek. Uh, for construction that's beginning this week, uh, we have begun uh, construction on the trail on the west side of Resources Road between 88th Avenue and 68th Avenue. Uh, road construction will begin on Pinnacle Drive uh, adjacent to 108th Street as well as along 68th and 92nd Avenue over beside our country uh, side north and countryside south. In planning and development, uh, we've had currently 108 business uh, license applications for new businesses that are subject to the new business licensing bylaw uh, that came into effect May 1st. Uh, right now, there's a six-month period where you don't have to have your business license, but we're trying to get everybody signed up in advance uh, of that. And uh, we also hired a summer student to aid in that that will assist with businesses getting signed up. Uh, in transportation, uh, we're finalizing all the locations for the rapid, rapid flashing beacons 
that we approved as part of our uh, stimulus funding that will be uh, being installed this summer across the city. Uh, for traffic signals, uh, we've been working with consultants and contractors for the downtown project, trying to refine some of the signal timings. The traffic engineer on that project uh, in, or, had us change some of the signal timings. We're just trying to make sure that uh, they're going to work for everybody and are reflecting the actual conditions on the ground. For street sweeping, we've completed all priority one and two roads, have had at least one round of sweeping. We're currently going back to some of the areas where uh, we've had additional uh, debris on the road or we had numerous parked vehicles that uh, caused us not to be able to pick some stuff up in some areas, and we're just going back to do that now. We anticipate to be in residential areas around Victoria Day. In downtown, uh, as uh, Monty noted, we have uh, done a fairly comprehensive cleanup of the alleys. Uh, we are also going to do some asphalt repair in a few areas in those alleys as well, uh, with minimal disruption to, uh, to any traffic in those areas, specifically on the ones that are adjacent to uh, the construction that's happening. In parks, uh, we have all our seasonal staff on board, as you've seen in the last uh, week or so, downtown uh, cleaning up as well as along some of our roads. Today, we plan to start the Highway 43 cleanup. And uh, with that, I'll take any questions. Excellent. Thank you, Director Glavin. I see Councillor Thiessen and Councillor O'Toole. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Chair Bressie. Thanks, Director Glavin, <clears throat> for the update. I'm just, uh, I have a few questions, actually. It's been a busy week for me uh, out hiking and walking and stuff like that. Um, uh, when you're talking about the revegetation of the erosion of the, the banks along South Bear Creek, uh, I was a bit curious um, uh, because I, I was with a walk not too long ago, and uh, it's, I guess, west of the Ball Diamonds around one of the, one of the trails there uh, and on the east side of the South Bear Creek Bank. Uh, there's a big schluff off of the actual land, like it's literally eroding, separating, and moving into the creek. Um, just discovered it. I've been watching it for a bit, but it's starting to get some big separation there. I was wondering if you were aware of that. I guess this would be south of 68, uh, uh, west of the Ball Diamonds, and on the Inlet Trail, uh, close to the east side of the bank. Yes, thanks, Chair Bresti. Yeah, we are aware of, of significant movement in a few areas uh, down in that area. Right now, it's more or less just us monitoring it. Uh, mm -hmm. There's not any critical infrastructure that's being um, exposed by this at the moment. And uh, so right now we, we don't have any uh, significant plans to do anything to counteract that movement uh, as it's not threatening infrastructure. Okay. No, and that's, that's fine. I think uh, part of the trail might be getting close to, to sloughing in or could be a pinch off of the creek. That's my, my concern, I guess, in there. The other thing that I noticed in the South Bear Creek area is uh, right close to the disc golf throwing area up by, I guess you could call it the south side of, of the west side of where the ball diamonds are. Um, I noticed that there's a lot of uh, holes that are forming, almost like little sinkholes. Garter snakes are using it as their little snake pits. One was uh, one was discovered, I think, by city crews. It was ribboned off, uh, but about 10 feet to the west of that one, there was another one that was only barely covered up with, with grass. And I noticed it this Friday. I didn't have my phone. It was dead. So otherwise, it would have taken a picture and sent it into our, our parks crew. But I wanted to make you aware of that as well, just in case anybody's going down that wide expanse that takes you down into one of the disc golf holes. I'd hate to see somebody fall into, into a grass -led hole. And it's along the edge, I guess, of the wide mode area or the path. Uh, so I wanted to make you aware of that. And finally, um, uh, along Willow Drive, uh, I was just taking a walk, and it seems like all of our storm, storm drains and manhole covers are severely cracked or exposing to maybe a, a bike tire going into, into the hole and stuff. I have some pictures I can send you a little later, but I thought it was just a one-off, but as I walked up the street, uh, it looks like a lot of those manhole covers uh, to the storm drains are deteriorating really, really fast. Uh, we might want to get the city crew people looking at those just for safety. Sorry, no questions. I'm just pointing things out that I've seen. Great. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. I'll tell you from firsthand experience, if you throw something to that snake pit and ask to go get it, it's scary as anything. Uh, Councillor O'Toole. 
I've got visions of Raiders of the Lost Ark right now. Thank you very much. And I may never walk on those trails again. I'm scared of snakes, so. <laughs> Hundreds of them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to hear about that. No. Nope. So uh, the question I have uh, to Mr. Gavin is uh, a number of years ago, we had uh, soil erosion along the creek bank, and we tried a method of inserting steel stakes into the ground. Uh, and I was just curious, uh, that did that work as well as we expected or or maybe not? I know, I know there was an expense to it, but it was cheaper than other alternate routes at that time. Thanks, Chair Brassi. Uh, although I'm aware of the program, uh, that was before I was exposed to anything infrastructure related at the city. So I'm not really sure of the scope of it or how that program was done, but that's something I can certainly look into. Uh, no problem. I just thought uh, we can uh, just doing some comparison and stuff like that. So uh, no worry. Don't have to do any homework for me. That's fine. Great. And then I see Councilor Minhoff. Thank you, Dylan and uh, Brian. My question is, remember last year when we had a flood, then we had to block uh, north of that 68 uh, bridge over the Bear Creek to um, Mission Height. Then we had to cross by with the Menhaus Park. It's not much damage because I walked through there, but I, I was remembering uh, Rasi was saying if we can spend some money to make that uh, creek, it, it's not much left in there to get straight down that way it won't get damaged. Is there any plan to do something there this year? It seems like it's not moved this year so far, unless it gets flooded again. Yeah, thanks, Chair Brassi. Uh, that's something that we've had some preliminary inquiries with uh, Alberta Environment, but there's a significant amount of work that you need to do if you want to actually redirect a body of water uh, where there's a lot of approval. So right now it's very, very preliminary in there, and we're not sure that's the best method to um, utilize at this time, if that would solve the problem or, or not. Okay. okay, good. Mayor Clayton. Thanks so much, Chair Bressy. Uh Just a question, Director Glavin, in regards to landscaping in the earlier phases. If I recall correctly, each year sort of has a warranty on landscaping um, and driving down phase one and two, um, where's, where's the status on parks upkeep and maintenance or is that still in warranty on phase one and two? Um, will we see replanting soon? Um, you know, I'm just curious if you have any information on phase one and two. I'd have to confirm, but I believe phase one and two are now in our hands, uh, but I'd have to confirm that. And if there's any issues with vegetation on there, that would be something we'd put into our replacements. Uh, and on phase three, I believe that uh, Wapiti Head uh, replaced a number of trees last fall prior to winter. So uh, we should see uh, if that all worked out or not here very shortly. Okay, great, thanks. Great, any other questions? Uh, Derek, Derek Lovin. Yeah, not a question for myself, but something that I uh, meant to say earlier is that uh, uh, one of the projects that we intended to do this year that we weren't sure if we were going to do or not is uh, the regrading and uh, replanting of grass over at the Montrose Cultural Center. With it being the vaccin vaccination site, we were actually contemplating making it a parking lot temporarily at one point this year, but as we've seen right now, the capacity of that site uh, seems to allow for enough parking. As well, we've made the west side of the City Hall available for parking if it needs to overflow into it. So that's something we might move up and do a little bit sooner than later uh, and try and get that grass reestablished now as opposed to uh, next year. Uh, just given if, if events aren't being allowed to be done this year, we'd rather not impact, you know, perhaps the next rib fest or something else uh, in a future year. So you might see us uh, get that done here sooner than later. Excellent. Thank you. And with that, I believe you're next up for outstanding items list, Director Glavin. Thanks, Chair Bressy. So with the outstanding items list, we have the two items, uh, the narrow lots that we're looking to have back uh, August or sooner, um, but uh, right now tentatively in August. Uh, and on the uh, incentives, uh, we've done some pretty extensive stakeholder consultation with that. That kind of keeps on pushing it back little by little here. 
but uh, we think that we've got something that uh, uh, industry is supportive of, uh, generally speaking, and uh, hope to have it in front of uh, committee very shortly uh, in the next couple of weeks. So, and with that, uh, that's my update. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Thiessen. Thank you, Chair Bressey. I would move that, uh, that we approve the outstanding items list as presented. Excellent. Certainly in order. Any discussion or debate on that motion? In that case, I will call its question. And that motion carries. And with that, I will call this meeting adjourned. And I believe we've got protective and social services next. And we'll give everybody.